Budapest, where East meets West. Famous for the majestic Danube and a twisting, turning Grand Prix circuit. The Hungara Ring. A fixture on the Formula One calendar since its pioneering debut 35 years ago. Now host to another group of history makers. W Series is in town. Lights out, we're underway for W Series. Drivers from across the world making their mark on the biggest stage. Victory goes to Alice Powell. Race 4, prepare for drama. So this race means four down and four to go. W Series last race before the summer break is from the Hungara Ring in Budapest. Welcome to race day at round four for the 2021 W Series, proudly racing for the first time at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Our venue is just a couple of miles from downtown Budapest, and there's no doubting it's a great location, but it's the track which always gets the drivers talking. And here are the drivers. The Battle of Britain on the front row, Jamie Chadwick up against her title rider and points leader, Alice Powell, in second. Then it's Marty with a very impressive third place ahead of Baskovica, it's fourth for the third time this season. Sidakova was strong as well in the junior entry of the academy. And then you've got Tomaselli, Marta Garcia, and then Emma Kimmelainen in eighth place. Belen Garcia is ninth. Jess Hawkins taking a step forward to qualify in the top 10. Vicky Piria is 11th. Alia Agren will go from 12th position on the grid. Second place at Silverstone, more of a struggle here in Hungary. For Fabian Volvend, next to Abby Eaton, who's looking to continue her point scoring run. Miki Kuyama is 15th, Sarah Moore in 16th position. And then it's Caitlin Wood in the ever-revolving door of that Puma entry, 17th on the grid, and Sabre Cook is 18th. It's a great place to go racing. Billy, it's a perfect place to chuck in an intense championship battle. An intense championship battle is what we finally got. We've got the two Brits, Alice Powell and Jamie Chadwick, sharing the front row together for the first time this season. They're first and second in the championship. And uh, turn one and two, it's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds. You've got the, the W Series Academy driver, Nerea Marti, in third as well. So the top three be fighting it out down into turn one. Yeah, the Academy drivers, Marti in third. Sidakova been on the podium already this year in fifth position. And good things come to those who wait. We are on the formation lap. Everyone taking their Alfa Romeo power. Identical cars, identical power output. 270 brake horsepower as the 18 talented drivers begin their formation lap around this circuit. Billy, you've driven it. Take us behind the wheel. What do you need after the back of this team radio? So don't forget we are expecting it to understeer properly a little bit in turn one. So let's just make sure that we keep the minimum at a point the car can rotate and try and get clean exits. Good luck. Good bit of advice there from Emma Kimmelainen's engineer. So they're going around for the formation lap. I mean, the temperatures, as we've seen this weekend out here in the Hungar Ring, are particularly high. Track temp is 54 degrees, which is cooler than we've seen. We've seen it in the 60s, which is just incredible. So gaining the tyre... Are getting the pressures up to where they need to be and the tyre temperatures up to into the right window should be fairly easy. You've got to work on your brakes. You've got to be doing a lot of throttle and brake to get everything in the right window because you don't want to be understeering in the first few corners and losing out on that opportunity to make up places because this circuit, after the first couple of laps, is notoriously hard to overtake on. Yeah, so it's going to be fast and frenetic at the start. It is a long run down to turn number one, and it doesn't often end there. They're plunging down the hill through two and then to three. As Billy has pointed out to you, track temperature 54 degrees, and they have been out there in comparable uh, conditions, but that is still way up from what they've experienced this year. Yeah, this circuit, the, the degradation we're going to see in this race should be a lot higher than we've seen at other circuits. In Austria, it's such a short lap with a lot of long straights, so the temperatures of the tyres are in control. But this circuit is a lot of twisty. That middle sector, sector two, so many corners are intertwined with each other where if you make a mistake in one where the tyres go out of the window a little bit and you push them too hard, you struggle to recover it through that sequence of corners. So these drivers have really got to look after it. And I think that is going to be critical because I think towards the end of the race, we will see drivers who have pushed their tyres too far and will fall back into the clutches of drivers behind. It's stressing the tyres in a totally different way to Silverstone where it's all about the high speed there. They're 
is different to here. Here is all about the constant flow of corners, but it's different speed. It's led to a bit of a change. If you look beyond the top two on the grid and the championship, huge variety race to race for what we've seen. Yeah, I mean, you've got Sarah Moore, who's third in the championship. She's right down at the back of the field in terms of where she normally has been qualifying. She's been right at the sharp end. So the positions are jumbled up apart from the two Brits on the front row. So this could be a lot of action into turn one of drivers jostling for position and trying to make up for their maybe slightly below par performance in yesterday's qualifying session. Green flag at the back. Round four is five lights away. We're underway in Budapest with a good reaction time for Alice Powell, but it's Jamie Chadwick who keeps the lead and Alice Powell is looking in her mirrors. The two academy drivers of Sidakova and Marty are side by side and Bites Gavissa is going to try and throw one or lay it on the brakes into turn one. Does everyone make that corner? Lock up from the yellow car of Marta Garcia, but sprinting off into the distance, having held the lead perfectly is Jamie Chadwick who's looking to try and convert another pole and it's side by side. Sidakova trying to go down the inside of Vissa. Is she able to turn fifth? into fourth. I think she's going to be able to do so. So it's as you were at the front of the field and this has not wanted to give that one up. She left the wheel in there. They both made it through and it's Sidakova up to fourth. That's a great move from the academy driver there. Irina Sidakova, a great overtake. We've seen lots of action into turn two there. Drivers overtaking on the inside, outside. There was, a, there was someone that went wide at turn four there. I'm not too sure who that was in the background, but Jamie Chadwick, what a start for her. She's opened up a small gap over Alice Powell to start off with and then you can see this queue of cars coming through the middle sector now. I believe it was Abby Eaton off the road at turn four. She did continue though. You can see her teammate, car number seven, Emma Kimmerlinen, putting the pressure on the driver who locked up the Puma entry of Marta Garcia. Marta Garcia, fourth in the point standings back in 2019. There was no W Series in 2020. Many expected her to contend for the title. She's just looking to get up and running with her first points today. Points are awarded to the top 10. That's laid on the brakes from Belen Garcia. She's going to get to the apex first. Who's got the better traction? The Spanish driver is side by side. Here we go, lay for car number seven and they nearly make contact with Bruno Tomaselli coming in there but it's Kim and who stays ahead. Oh she locks up the inside tyre she won't want to be doing that too often otherwise that tyre will be like a 50 pence piece and she'll be rattling down the straight so everyone made it through the lap fairly cleanly there you've got the two academy drivers in third and fourth they've got to be careful they're fairly close to each other and now Alice Powell's going to be hunting down Jamie Chadwick. And let's see in the background Tomaselli having to go defensive against Jess Hawkins. OK, you come into the box and uh, you'll see the crash crew. They will take care of that for you. Don't stop with us. Go to the crash crew. Crash crew located. Fabian Volvend after a dream. Silverstone, a bit of a nightmare Budapest. Lights went out. A poor initial reaction time from third place, Naria Marti, but she was able to hold off by Skavissa. Yeah, you can see Nira Marti in third. Her teammate Cyril Kova behind Bites Gavissa. They so nearly made contact down in turn one, but taking the outside line, she was able to carry the momentum and keep the position. We've seen one of the Scuderia cars, I think of Bell and Garcia, who actually made a good attempt at an overtake later in lap, actually ran wide. And here's the incident where Fabian Volven lost that front wing. Let's go down to the pits. Amy Reynolds has an update for that moment where Fabian Volven lost her front wing. <laughs> Yeah, just a little bit of an update that she's obviously back in as we've seen for repairs. Front wing damage, as Billy rightly pointed out, and she's also beginning getting a new nose. Uh, that was obviously because of the slow... Slow because... Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm just trying to get some feedback here on from the pit lane midway through talking. But a real shame for Fabian as she was hoping to get a really great start like she did in the previous, previous race where she had a slightly, uh, slightly worse grid spot. But let's see what she can do now after this. Thanks, Amy. 26 minutes left on the clock. We go to the end of the half hour, then we race an extra lap, and it's Jamie Chadwick, the fastest lap of the race, as she makes her way on to lap three with a 1.2 second lead. And that's why we're looking further back, because Chadwick has done the job that she needed to, to go off the line. So far this year, Alice Powell has won two races. The Elbow victory in Austria belonged to Jamie Chadwick. And we're looking once again at the driver in pole, getting away nicely, then settling into a rhythm. Yeah, they definitely, that's what Jamie Chadwick needs to do. This circuit is such a rhythm circuit. And there's still 26, nearly 26 minutes on the clock left. So a lot of 
time left in this race for Jamie Chadwick. Her and Alice Powell in the last lap separated in lap time wise by four thousandths and they do seem to have an advantage over the rest of the field. They're the only two drivers in the one minute 44s right now. So Chadwick, then Powell, then Marty Sidakova, who made that position on Vanska Vissa, Garcia, who was getting pretty feisty along with Emma Kimmerleinen, and then uh, Bellen Garcia, uh, who is in eighth place, Bruno Tomaselli and Jess Hawkins completing the point scorers at the moment. But look at this, Vanska Vissa might have lost that place, but she's not going anywhere. She's basically glued to the rear wing of that Academy car piloted by the young Russian who just had a bit of a moment you saw that even from the helicopter there bit of a moment going through turn 11 and losing ground to her teammate as a result yeah she's lost a little bit of time there to Niria Marty her teammate and Baitskabissa this is where experience will pay off because she may have been out qualified by the likes of Marty obviously she started this race in front of Sidokova so she knows over one lap she did have a slight advantage over her but she's got experience she's driven these cars around a multiple different variety of circuits in the 2019 season she has experience with managing tires and that's what's going to pay it come into account now and she's close down this main straight she might be about to launch a move to try and retake that fourth place looks to the inside but there's no error from Sidakova ahead Sidakova who was on the podium with a fine second place in the second race of the year and she is trying to improve later on past her teammate. Right now, though, looking in the mirrors rather than ahead. Chadwick with another fastest lap of the race, but there's not much between Chadwick and Powell. They are in a league of their own out front. They really are. Jamie Chadwick in the 43s on that lap. Alice Powell, 44-0. The next best, Niria Marty, 44-9. So they have almost got a one second per lap advantage at the minute. I'm sure they will even out as they start to all get into a rhythm. The front two do have that slight experience of being at the front they both led races in this series this season from pole so they have experience they can switch the tires on quick now the rest of the drivers will be slowly building it up to that speed alice powell is not going to let this one go though because if they finish where they are for the moment it would be a swap in championship lead and jamie chadwick our inaugural champion in 2019 would take over the points lead there she is in the veloce car ahead of the racing x entry Powell chasing down Chadwick, those two leaving the rest of the field behind. But there, once again, hardly any spread between the field behind. And as a result, one lockup, one wide moment around a track which really doesn't give the driver a moment's rest. And you're going to be tumbling down the order. This is all about rhythm. This, is, this, this, this circuit, the corners just lead into each other. Coming through the last corner here now, Baitskavissa tucks right up behind Irina Sidokova on the main straight. Let's see how this slipstream comes into effect here. She's behind her closely enough. I would expect a slipstream to start to emerge. Is she going to send it down the inside into turn one? Thinks about it, but just does not have the momentum to launch one down the inside. And the Dutch driver has to look at the rear wing once again. For Sidakova, who has a two-year deal, both Academy drivers fully funded for two years. And the youngsters doing themselves proud so far this season. Sidakova, 18 years of age, Nuria Marti, the driver, looking for that breakthrough podium. She's been in the points in all three races so far this year, but never on the rostrum. She is 19 years of age, and they are really having a good breakthrough for that Academy team. Sidakova said that she struggled with the high-speed stuff at Silverstone. Uh, she said that she'd gone through the ladder on circuits that were similar to this. And then you go to Silverstone, a whole different ball game. But what I like about it, she didn't shy away from it. She said, OK, that wasn't my weekend. She's bounced back. She's in the top four. And she is trying to keep Bainska Visser behind her. She's all about getting points. That's what this championship is going to be down to at the end of the day. And she's a rookie. She's all about gaining as much experience from these situations as possible. So bad weekends are going to make her career as much as good ones are. And she needs to come to terms with the fact that some track she's going to go to, she doesn't quite click with. Like she said at Silverstone, the high speed caught her out a bit. She's come here, she's bounced back. That shows a great mentality. It is very tight in the battle for fourth place. It is extending for the battle for the lead. If you weren't with us yesterday for qualifying, I'll summarise it. Billy was very impressed with Jamie Chadwick's speed through the middle sector. We looked at the timing page. She's doing the same thing. Yeah, that's where she really is holding a margin to the rest of the competitors. A 43.7, six temps quicker than Alice Pound that last lap. That's the first time they've gone around this circuit in the race so far where we've seen a big difference in lap time between the front two. So is, there's, there's two questions that come to my head off the back of that. Is Jamie Chabot pushing too hard too soon 
or is she just in her league of Ryan at the minute? We're looking at her teammate, Bruno Tomaselli, car number 97 in the Veloce entry. It's a Scuderia, right red Scuderia entry ahead. Eighth place, Belen Garcia. Very close to these two earlier on. Emma Kimmelainen has disappeared and is beginning to put the pressure on Marta Garcia in the Puma car in the battle for sixth place. And let's check in on the radio. So good start, pace is really good. Pace is really good. And that is what she wants to hear, chasing her first points of the season. That's exactly what she wants to hear. She qualified seventh. She's qualified seventh three times this season, but hasn't delivered in the race with any points yet. So the fact that she's running sixth, she's made up a position, and she seems fairly comfortable, although Kim Alinen, only four temps behind, she will have to be aware of that. Marta Garcia could do with getting the gap down to Visser in front of her, less than a second in an ideal situation, but she's holding her own, and she's on for points so far. Timing page telling a story right now. The drivers out front, very few of them are setting personal best lap after lap. They're all thinking about carrying these tyres to the end of the 30 minutes plus one lap. That's exactly what they've got to do. This race is far from over. We're not even halfway, Alex. We've got <laughs> plenty of time left on the clock. Marta Garcia running a little bit wide there, but there are different lines around this circuit that you can take to avoid being behind the car in front and in that dirty air because you lose a lot of downforce, which at a track like the Hungara Ring is, cri is critical. You need the clean air on the front wing. A winner in Germany in the first season of W Series. Sixth place, Marta Garcia on the podium two occasions in 2019 and looking to get on the board and trouble the scorers and then build a season from there so much momentum can be built up you just need to do you sometimes lose a little bit of confidence and just one result can set you right I'm sure Marta Garcia will have been questioning why her performances this year haven't lived up to I mean we expected a lot more from her I think she probably expected more from herself in the opening race of the season but running in sixth right now one good result can make a difference it can just be that little change in man mentality which means you can progress and get better and better throughout the season uh, last time around another impressive lap from Jamie Chadwick it's a 2.7 second lead at the front of the field 143.7 for Chadwick on course to become the new points leader as she seeks to defend her title. 141, uh, 144-1 for Alice Powell, now 2.7 seconds behind. The lap times Jamie Chadwick are putting in right now, she's doing an incredible job. I mean, in qualifying yesterday, she qualified pole on a 142.7 and she's only a second off, which around a circuit like this, with the amount of time they're gonna be putting onto those tires, isn't that far off. You see in Formula One, them sometimes driving around four or five seconds off the times that they qualify in, especially at the start of a race. So she is pushing hard. Further back down the order, here's Fabian Volwend, who we saw on the opening tour of the race was involved in a collision, which removed the front wing. And she came in to change that, but you can see that she is a long way back. It is no mandatory pit stops. It is lights to flag stuff. And that is the sight of Jamie Chadwick closing in. She's very nearly a whole lap down. And Fabian Volvend, I mean, after the back of Silverstone, where she had a great race, she took the lead on the first lap. She got a great start. And obviously her first lap here in Hung Hungar Ring hasn't gone to plan. She's dropped positions. She didn't have a great, great qualifying session either. So things have just not clicked for her this weekend. And with the short, only half hour practice session that these W Series drivers get before they go out to qualifying, they need to be in one with the car and sort of on it from the, from the get go. And that just hasn't been the case for her. Let's go, but, uh, let's go back downstairs to Amy, who's got an update on Sabre Cook. Well, we talk about things just not clicking, and so far this season, things have really not clicked for Sabre, Sabre Cook, which is a shame because she's one of those drivers that potentially makes up the most amount of positions when it comes to race. In fact, I think she is the driver that makes the most amount of places to win the race. You've just seen her hit the curbs there. The thing is, if she keeps on qualifying at the back of the grid, she's giving herself an awful lot of work to do when it comes to the races. And like I said, still yet to score, but she's just been overtaken there by Miki Koyama. Uh, so that's another place gone. But come on, Sabre Cook, we need to see a bit more from you so far this year. Thank you, Amy. Sabre Cook trying to score those first points of the season. The difference between one lap pace and when you put all of the, uh, the fuel in the car, tell us how that affects the machinery. Here's the team radio. I can't see for high. Because my dear is so, so much up, please tell me. 
fucking quiet. Yeah, get focus. For Yama behind, but uh, you are. It's the same pace, it's the same pace. Get focus. So I think she was wanting to know the gap, and then there is the gap. Miki Kuyama going ahead and taking 13th place. And Sarah Moore here, only two temps behind Sabre Cook. Is she going to make the move? She's looking up the inside late on the brakes, but she thinks better. She just tucks in behind Sabre Cook, and this is a real big battle emerging, but obviously at the minute they're not in points paying position, so that'll be disappointing. But just going back to your point, Alex, about being in qualifying over one lap, how the car balance feels, the stuff you've got to do as we actually see Sarah Moore make a slight inside lock up into turn two. It's quite common there with the way the camber of the corner is, it's easy to run wide and lock that inside tyre as it's unloaded. But the drivers will be very aware of this circuit, the nature of it before they arrived here this weekend, that the fact that qualifying was critical. So I imagine a lot of them have geared their setup to make to meaning that they can deliver over one lap. And then when it comes to the race, kind of getting through those first couple of laps and dealing with the balance how it is. Out front, Jamie Chadwick yesterday said after pole position, yeah, a bit of a bit of a scruffy lap. Yeah. Uh, and I thought, really, was it? Yes, is the answer. She is pulling away at the front of the field. She was seven tenths up in practice. And then it was three tenths of a second she was ahead in qualifying. And now 3.4 seconds to the good. Maria Marty doing a great job there with a good buffer as well to her teammate looking for that first W Series podium. Sidakova does not have that luxury. She's just got the advantage of half a second. And is Visser going to be able to just sit there and accept following? I very much doubt it. I doubt it as well. He'll, she will definitely be looking to, to bridge that gap. It's half a second at the minute and she'll be looking to close that down and try and get herself in a position to make an overtake. The problem with following only half a second behind the car in front is you are doing more damage to your tyres than you need to if you're running in clean air. That's why we see Jamie Chadwick out front being able to consistently produce the lap time she's producing. Just as I say that, she goes purple in the first sector. She can really just dictate her pace and build lap on lap on lap and not worry about what everyone else is doing. So someone like Baitskavissa in fifth place, wondering whether this track temperature, still 51 degrees out there, surely it's going to require some tyre management as the drivers encounter track temperatures the like of which they haven't seen. It got very warm both in Austria and Silverstone, so it's racing in the summer. It's been great entertainment so far. And Jamie Chadwick looking all at ease right now and just not, not wild over the kerbs, just extending that lead 30 minutes to go plus that final lap of racing and we might be about to have a new championship leader after alice powell waited for so long for her moment the lesson from silverstone is oh and we've got volven there who uh, is one lap down and so the blue flags are out for the driver who lost at the nose at the start of the race and that was niria marty slotting past Fabian Volven there and as Fabian looks like she's coming into the pit so I don't know if she's got ongoing problems or she's just been told that she's going to retire the car I'm not too sure why she's come in at the minute hearing from the pit lane this is going to be a retirement for the driver who had scored in all three races so far this year on the podium in two of them fourth in the points going in today and when it is so very tight and we have a flurry of races eight races this year at the end of this one we're at the halfway stage any DNF is going to cost you dearly. Still, lap 10, Weitzke Visser, faster, still unable to do anything with her momentum. Maybe she just can't get that exit through turn 14, but maybe she's going to have to force the error. A little bit Lewis Hamilton, Charles Leclerc style from Silverstone, maybe force the error out of Sidakova. Yeah, Vissa, she can put on as much pressure as she wants, but she needs to get the move done. That's where the points come into play. So if I was her, if you kind of get stuck into a bit of a rhythm sometimes when you're following a driver in front, here's Vabi and Volven in the pits. And if you get stuck behind that driver for too long, spend too many laps, you sort of adapt your style almost to slot into admitting defeat and just following the car in front. So I'm wondering whether if she is struggling with tyres, if that is a factor, whether we might see her back off for a couple of laps get the tyres back into a better window and then go for a real attack towards the end of the race. The race so far with 11 minutes to go, Jamie Chadwick nicely off the line, maintaining pole position. Powell and Marty got a poor reaction time, had to go defensive, did go defensive, and that interrupted the momentum of Baitskavissa. Sidakova able to make the move and go through. I think that's about it. Uh, Lee promised that she'd go on the grid about three times, and that's the action that we've seen so far. Fabian Volven, the only retirement. Yeah, we've seen 
plenty of action in the first couple of corners. A lot of close moments as well, because where Niria Marty didn't quite get the start she anticipated or would have wanted, her teammate Cyril Kova at a point, uh, point there in turn one was millimetres away from the rear of her car. So I thought there could potentially be contact, but now they've both settled into a rhythm. Niria Marty looks fairly comfortable in third, but her teammate Cyril Kova has got a lot of work to do here, because Vissa, we know the experience she's got. And Vissa, the one advantage she has, she's got no one behind her, so she can fall into that gap. She can manage the tyres how she wants it. She can put her car in lots of different positions to force an error from Cyril Kova. Only one retirement so far in the race. Let's get an update from Amy about Fabian Volvet. Yeah, unfortunately, guys, she felt as though there was just too much damage on the car, and when she got lapped, she decided that it was time to retire. Real shame, because she's still holding fourth in the standings, perhaps unlikely after today, and she was actually in top three in practice earlier this weekend. Really disappointing for our most recent podium finisher last time out in Silverstone. Yeah, really strong second place back at Silverstone, but not her day today. It's the response that... Millie has talked about so many times that's going to define things and she is rendered a spectator along with the rest of us. Not what she wanted to be doing with nine minutes of the race to go. It's a four, nearly five second lead for Jamie Chadwick out front and a good margin for Nerea Marti. And Fabian Bowen was, was so positive after losing the lead at Silverstone and then once again, not too hard on herself, not looking too downbeat there. She'll come back and looking to score a third podium when we go racing at the next contest, which is Belgium, the magnificent Spa Francorchamps. And I'm sure we're going to see plenty of action when we go to Spa, especially along the Kemmel Strait going up on the first lap. These cars all evenly matched in performance, so they've got the same engines, the same chassis, and that promotes normally great racing. This circuit is renowned for it being difficult to overtake on and we're still seeing cars follow a lot closer than we see in other series so the action is still there there's still a few potential overtakes to come we've got Tomaselli on the back of Belen Garcia she's just over half a second behind and that sort of margin there that's where you'll be looking in your mirrors if you're Belen Garcia and you know that there's pressure coming and you're trying to get yourself prepared for that right now so very tight for that battle between Belen Garcia and Bruno Tomaselli also for Bites Gavissa the runner-up in the 2019 W Series Championship to Jamie Chadwick, our race leader, comfortable race leader right now. Uh, this would be Bainscovic's best result of the season so far in fifth. And does she balance that reward at the fifth place, the best of the season so far, with the risk of trying to improve up to fourth? Or are you going to be able to tell a racing driver, don't make that move that's been coming all race long? I think it's all down to perspective, and I think Bites Gavissa, compared to where we expected her to be performance-wise this season, she hasn't quite lived up to what we thought. We thought we'd see her regularly on the rostrum, on the podium, but that's not been the case. She's low down in the standings compared to where we thought she would be, and I imagine where she thought she would be herself. So I think she's a driver that can play with that risk a little bit more than others. Hey, does that stand again, mate? Pretty good job. Sums it all up rather nicely. Engineer on the radio to Jamie Chadwick, who is nearly uh, six and a half seconds ahead of Alice Powell. And Powell, who was talking about her qualifying lap yesterday, saying he needed to do it late on. She eventually got it together, and so important that she did because Chadwick has always looked likely to be the driver who wins this weekend. Yeah, she's been outstanding from practice onwards. I mean, yesterday, only the top six were within a second of her in qualifying. And the lap time she's doing now is just over a second what she was, what the lap time she did in qualifying. So she's basically putting in top six quality laps every single lap in a 30 minute race. So her performance today has been outstanding and a six and a half second lead is the least she deserves right now. Abby Eaton coming under pressure there. British driver from Mickey Kuyama. That's in the battle for 12th position. Kuyama, who got past Sabre Cook earlier on, took 13th, now looking at 12th. Maria Martin setting the fastest first sector of the race. So can she try and do anything about that gap that she's got? About four seconds to Alice Powell. I've got to say, Alex, I love these tyres that these W Series drivers have got for 
the course of the season. It just allows them to push consistently throughout the race, something that we don't often see in Formula 1. There are moments in a Formula 1 race where the tyre degradation is too high and they have to manage that considerably, but these drivers seem like, within reason, they can push these tyres hard throughout a whole 30-minute race in conditions like we've got here where the track temp is just falling below 50 degrees, but it's still absolutely cooking out there. I mean, it's impressive. Talking of impressive, closing down and seemingly with a lot of pace the driver who started the season with a strong fifth position that Spielberg has had a difficult time of it didn't finish the last race at Silverstone Mickey Koyama in the wheel tracks here and certainly more confident than Abby Eaton ahead carrying that famous number 44 but it's 54 who seems to have the confidence in the young Japanese driver is she going to be able to shape for the move? She's going to have a great run by the time that she comes out of 14. The final corner, that's 13. One corner to go. And unsurprisingly, British driver Abby Eaton looking in the mirrors. You can see Koyama there took a narrow line on the entry to turn 14, trying to get a bit of clean air. She's ran a little bit wide on the exit and looks like Abby Eaton has got that clean exit. And that turn 14, that's the corner where she needs the good exit because turn one is the obvious overtaking opportunity for Koyama. Is she going to have a look at the inside? Thinks better of it. Just not getting the effect of the slipstream like you would expect, but her drive off the corners, something else. So turn one didn't work out. How about turn two? Let's find out. Oh, she's hit the back of Abby Eaton. And Abby Eaton keeps it going. Contact between the pair of them as they battle over 12th position. Side by side. And Abby Eaton's going to leave the wheel in there, will they? Both make the corner. Somehow they do. Side by side. Everyone, take a breath. We're going to turn four with two cars wheel to wheel. And Miki Koyama with a little bit of damage to the nose finally makes her way through. And that was great racing. I mean, the, the way that all unfolded was obviously as a result of Mickey Kiyama making contact with Abby Eaton. So I'm sure the stewards will look into that. I was expecting Kiyama to dive bum round the outside. That turn two offers that opportunity, but she decided to stay right behind Abby Eaton in the braking zone and lost that downforce for being so close and ended up making contact with her in the entry, as we see here. So once again, I think Mickey Kiyama is expecting a card whip to appear and it never did. Abby Eaton absolutely entitled to hold the line into the corner and then the fight continued. Yeah, the fight did continue. I'm wondering how the stewards are going to view that because that contact was a little bit unnecessary in my opinion. That is definitely Kiyama's fault. So whether they decide to penalise her because of as she lost the position or because they ran side by side for a few corners, they might maybe let it slide. Back to live pitches and Sidakova. Sidakova in fourth place ahead of Baitskavissa in fifth and it's been this way for a while now since Sidakova was able to dive down at the start of the race we're looking back now to lock up shows you that Emma Kimmerlein hasn't given this one up at all and if you have taken a little bit too much out of your hand cooked ties you're going to find out in the next few moments uh, race control letting us know the incident between Abby Eaton and Hikoyama will be investigated after the race Abby Eaton's teammate Emma Kimmerlein is the one trying to put pressure on Marta Garcia, who will be ticking off the seconds here and go, come on, come on, nearly there, nearly back in the points to get her season finally started at round four. Your front wing is okay, keep pushing, keep pushing. The engineer there telling Mickey Koyama to keep pushing that there's no significant damage that's going to affect the aero performance of that car. And uh, with the potential of a penalty coming after the race, as the stewards will be looking into that, I imagine the engineer's for point of view will be, oh, hold on, we've got Kim Alain and Marta Garcia side by side. And that was for the error at turn 11 and trying to go around the outside but being squeezed off the road. Emma Kimmelina, no, she can't overtake there, can't just throw it to the inside. Side by side, these two after the error from Marta Garcia and through goes Emma Kimmelina up to sixth position and she put the pressure on. You saw that happen, but after running wide out of turn 12, she was able to make the move through turn 50. Uh, through turn 13, there we are, can add one to the corner at turn 12. And finally, Emma Kimmelina's race long pressure has paid off, but Garcia, will she be arguing that the move was half made off the road? Yeah, I mean, there is potential to say that Emma Kimmelina kept her foot in when she got potentially run off the road. I mean, Marta Garcia didn't really leave her much room on the outside, so I feel like there's a bit of a 50-50 blame to be portioned on that one. I'm wondering how the stewards are going to take a look at that. But these two have been so close the whole race. Now we're going to look. We can see out of turn 11, that was where the mistake was made for Marta Garcia. 
then Emma Kimmelainen positions the car to the outside, is forced wide. You'd expect nothing else from Marta Garcia, who was ahead. And then it was side by side into 13. Wide they both went, but Kimmelainen taking sixth place. Yeah, Kimmelainen just had the racing line and looked like Marta Garcia was on the marbles on the exit of the corner there. And that just forced her to concede the position. But they were quite lucky, actually. And Kimmelainen, I must say, managed that lock up quite well because you easily see people lock up that inside front there like she did when she made that move on Marta Garcia for sixth and keep locking up and then understeer into the car on the outside. She did well to manage that. No major contact because of her good performance on the brakes there. So Marta Garcia making that error at turn 11 shows you how easy it is to do as Jamie Chadwick sets the fastest lap of the race with uh, 20 seconds to go on 1.43.6. And that was significantly faster than Alice Bell. Look at the lead she's got down in a turn number one. This is an absolutely stunning performance from Jamie Chadwick. I've been looking at her lap times every lap, and she's been within three temps, I think. 43.6 to a 43.9 is the, the sort of differential I've seen lap times across 17 laps now. She has been consistent, she's been quick, she's been dominant from the start of this weekend, and she's got nearly a nine second gap now as a result of it. Really dominant stuff from Jamie Chadwick, and she's not going to give up her title without some fight. Neria Marti in third position with the clock at zero. One lap to go at the end of this one then. On for a podium after scoring a PB of fifth so far this year. She's going to join the other drivers that we've seen on the podium, which have included Alice Powell, Jamie Chadwick, Sarah Moore, Fabian Volven, not her day-to-day, -day, Emma Kimmelainen, Irina Sidakova have been there and they are about to have company in that club. Maneria Marti about to join the podium finishers this season. Chadwick still setting the timing page alight. She is relentless. I think she must think that every time she sets the fastest lap, she gets an extra bonus point because <laughs> she's doing it high on every lap. I mean, it's incredible to watch. That last lap, she's nearly a second quicker than Alice Powell and P2, who's won two races this season. So I think that just highlights all we need to say about Jamie Chadwick at the minute. She is in a league of her own. Outstanding stuff and just having fun out there. About to set the final lap in motion. And she's on to lap 19 out there after half an hour's brilliant work. She's just got to bring it home. And ever since we got started with W Series this weekend, this looked likely, but the manner in which she has put this race together will surely give her the most cheer. Not only that, she's gonna take the points lead in a few kilometers time. I think this is a real confidence boost for her. And I mean, she's still second in the standings before this weekend. So I think the confidence was obviously there before that. But I think this really will take her potentially to another level, especially with the break we've got coming up. So just enjoying every single moment, having set that fastest lap as well. Fastest in practice, pole position. You are looking at a grand slam performance from Jamie Chadwick, who has ticked every single box and is about to become the new championship leader, racing for Veloce. And it's going to be her second win of the year. She can just bring it home now. Easy to get up and running. And I have to say, at the start of the year, doing some promotional events, she said, well, maybe my first championship was because I had more recent experience. You got the sense that she really wanted to come back and prove that she is the class of the field. She's about to go back to the head of the championship standings after a drive that certainly underlines that. Yeah, I raced Jamie in 2018, the year before she won W Series. She had consistent driving, which gave her a slight advantage in 19. This year, this is all her performance we're seeing right now. Out of the final corner, Jamie Chadwick sees the chequered flag first and wins at Budapest after the definition of a dominant drive. In second place, Alice Powell on the podium again this year for the third time. Nerea Marti, what a performance from her for her first trip to the podium in W Series. And Arena Sidakova took that position at the start and withstood the pressure. Here's the race winner. Yes, Jamie. Great job. Another perfect weekend. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Good yes. stuff. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Love you, Siri.
Thank you very much, Jay. Thank you, Formula One. Thank you. Thank you. Could you have imagined heading into the summer break with such a strong chance of the title this year? Not really, because we didn't do a lot of racing last year. We were out of the car, especially a single seat for a long, long time. So, uh, you know, to come back and uh, be fighting at a sharp end is, is, is good. And as you said, we've got a bit of a break now, but, you know, we'll come back stronger in, in the second half, hopefully. We'll see you in Spa. Congratulations. Thanks. Jamie, many congratulations to you. Your second win of the season. And of course, that in turn means you'll be heading into the summer break with a one point lead in the championship standings. Your thoughts on the race today? You were so supreme out there all weekend long. Yeah, I mean, I kind of said before the race, I'm sure it's going to be done at the start. So I could relax a little bit after turn one. Um, yeah, I think after the qualifying and practice, I knew I had the pace, um, you know, if I was ahead. So, yeah, just really focus on the start. And then after that, I could kind of settle into it and, yeah, just enjoy it, really. Just put out the laps and, yeah, fortunately, no safety cars, no interruptions. And, yeah, I was able to sort of bring it home in, in first place, which was, yeah, the aim coming into the weekend. Jamie, this is the second time this season we've seen you really bounce back from a race where things perhaps haven't gone the right way. Do you, do you find the ability to use that frustration and put it all into the next race weekend? Yeah, definitely. I think just this year anyway, you've not got the luxury of being able to be maybe quite as consistent as I was able to be in 2019. So, yeah, I think you have to be able to bounce back. We've seen it with Alice as well. So I think that's going to be the nature of the championship. But like I've said before, when you've got the opportunity to score big, you've, you've got to take it. So I'm just, yeah, really happy. Fantastic work from you today. Congratulations. Thank we'll you. see you after the summer break. Cheers. Neria, congratulations. Your first visit to the double W Series podium. How does that feel? Yeah, I'm super happy with my first podium. I work a lot for it and now I have to push for more. We can't Thank wait. You. I think this is the first of many more to come for you, Neria. Congratulations. Great work from you today. Thank you. Third place from Spain, Neria Marti. Well done to Nerea Marti in second place from Great Britain, Alice Powell. But the winner, her second win of the year, the reigning champion, Jamie Chadwick. Well done to Jamie Chadwick. And in her honour, the national anthem of Great Britain. Chadwick, congratulations on her second win of the year. If you'd like to raise your trophy, please, Jamie. Raise the trophy, thank you. Congratulations, well done. And also, of course, to Alice Powell on her third podium of the year. Congratulations to you. And to Nerea Marti on her first podium of the year. If you'd like to raise the trophy too, please, Nerea. Thank you. Well done, girls. And now, let's celebrate with Bollici!
So after a round four in Budapest, Jamie Chadwick had such a dominating weekend and wins the race, likes to flag victory for her. Alice Powell frustrated in second, but testament to what she's been achieving this year. And what a performance by Nerea Marty, one of the new drivers in W Series. She finishes her highest position in third. Her academy teammate, Irina Sidakova, is in fourth. Baitska Visser, fifth. Kimmelainen, Marta Garcia, followed by Belen Garcia, is in eighth. And Bruno Tomaselli, another new driver in ninth. And there, Jess Hawkins gets her first point of W Series in tenth. And what that means for the championship is that Jamie Chadwick leads by one point from her fellow Brit, Alice Powell. Nerea Marty, what an incredible performance again for the Spanish driver in her first season of W Series. Sarah Moore drops down to fourth. There we can see Baitska has just moved into the top 10. She was second in 2019's championship and Bruno Tomaselli rounds out the top 10. But what a weekend it's been here. Jamie Chadwick, a lights to flag victory, a dominant weekend. She wins in the heat of Budapest. She takes home a trophy and is in control of the W Series Championship. 2021 W Series proudly racing for the first time at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Jamie Chadwick has done what she needed to do occupying the front row it's chadwick versus powell we're underway in budapest sprinting off into the distance is jamie chadwick oh she's hit the back of abby eaton jamie chadwick sees the checkered flag and wins at budapest after the dominant drive